Nous allons voir In this video, we are going to discuss how we can uh, ensure credibility of the uh, models that are used to the projection of future climate. There are several factors that will impact the results of simulations, the content of the model, the way the equation is represented, dynamics, physics, all the interactions, biogeochemical interactions, but also parameters that must be defined and adjusted in order to achieve correct interactions between all the elements. Small variations in the parameters may have an impact on the final results. A simulation also means that uh, some uh, limitations must be imposed and uh, force external forcing elements. There are uncertainties, and the uncertainties may impact the final result. The protocol and the way that forcing is imposed on the simulation may change from one model to the next and have an impact on the result. Now, a, an intrinsic phenomenon to climate is variability, and depending on how we use variability, it introduces noise and does not make comparison easier. It must be considered in the comparison between models. For this reason, different types of assessments at different levels are developed, looking at the capacity of the model to reproduce a different climate from the current climate. The first basic assessment looked at climatology models in order to defer, determine whether it was compliant with the uh, available observations. Several measurement campaigns were organized on the field. Here we have uh, a model with the surface temperature, and the left-hand side map shows the multimodal mean surface temperature. It's a yearly average of all the models reproducing all of the observations, or it's rather similar to the observations, but if we make a difference between the simulated results on the right and the measurements, we see that the temperatures are too cold in the Northern Hemisphere, too warm in the Southern Hemisphere, and we obtain a confirmation if we look at the area average, depending on the latitude on the left-hand side, we have the difference in temperatures in the sea observed and simulated, and we see quite clearly on this map that simulation is too warm in the northern hemisphere and too cold in the southern hemisphere, and there is a lot of disparity between the model results. The same is shown along the equator on the right-hand side picture. We see between the Pacific Ocean on the left, the uh, Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, and we see that all the models are slightly too cold in the Pacific Ocean, and some models are have uh, different variations, completely different from all of the models, with too warm temperatures uh, on the western side. Therefore, this may show the presence of common behaviors and different behaviors in some models. Very quickly, these results have been characterized uh, to find out whether the models match each other, if the models evolve in time. This is Taylor's diagram, which is used. We have the amplitude, the range of the signal. On the uh, circle, there is a measure of the correlation between the uh, measured and observed data. And if we compare the uh, distance between the observed point and any of the points on the map, we find the quadratic mean difference, which provides a uh, difference in amplitude between the observed and simulated data. If the closer we get to the uh, observation point, the better. And this diagram tells us whether the uh, correlation is good between the uh, data simulated and the observed data, or whether it's this the field amplitude which is badly simulated. If we take CMIP5 or CMIP3, the two main sets of simulation data have the same level of quality based on the observation. Now, depending on what we're trying to model, we cannot always compare with observation. For instance, clouds, very fine scale elements shown in models which can be compared with satellite data. 
The clouds observed via satellite do not have exactly the same characteristics as the simulated one. Therefore, there are software being developed in order to make the comparison as if a satellite were flying in the model and looking at the clouds and the measurements. Therefore, we will be able to compare the cloud coverage. And if we compare the two maps, on the left-hand side, we have the results from the satellites, and on the right-hand side, the results from the model. This model presents clouds in yellow, which are more numerous in the middle latitudes of the northern and southern hemisphere than what is actually seen by the uh, satellite observations. This means that in the uh, low cloud representation, there is a bias, there is a flaw. Now, if we want to understand whether the model can uh, simulate a climate different from the current one, we can use numerous experiences uh, conducted by the uh, models in years past. Uh, the paleoclimate is also used as a test, and an example is provided here for the uh, climate 6,000 years ago. On the picture, we have a reconstitution of the yearly, the yearly rain in millimeters per year. In blue, there was more rain. In red, there was less rain for those places where we have data. And on the map, you have the average of a number of models and the difference compared with uh, today for the period 6,000 years ago. So blue, more rain, red, less rain in the model. This uh, period is characterized by a higher seasonal variability of sun radiation in the northern hemisphere. This induced more intense monsoons. Therefore, there was more rain in the Sahara and Sahel on this map. Also, if we compare the results from models and data shown in color, we see that uh, models represent the observed variations very well. But if we look closer and we push the analysis further, we see that the models tend to underestimate the amplitude of the changes observed. Therefore, models are satisfactory and fairly credible in the main lines, but they do have flaws in their representation, for instance, the amplitude of uh, the difference in rain. Thanks to these assessments, we can now better characterize the uncertainties for climatic projections, such as the ones that we are endeavoring to make for the coming century. On this graph, you have the results for a number of models for temperature changes, yearly average for the whole planet, depending on time. I mean, 1950 to 2000, the current climate, and then simulations with different assumptions regarding the socio-economic evolution and uh, greenhouse effect gas emissions. If no, nothing is done, we have the red curve. If uh, efforts are made to reduce emissions, we have the blue area. All these models and the comparisons allow us to characterize the uncertainties connected with modeling. And this is why we have error bars around the projection for each of the packages. Climatic changes are interesting because uh, the uh, errors are not the only source of uncertainty. We also must consider uncertainties from different origins based on the results provided by other communities. Here we have a number of assumptions regarding the evolution of socioeconomic factors which characterize the red and blue packages. Now, all of these uncertainties must be taken into consideration, whereby we will be able to better characterize the uh, risk for society of the current climatic changes.